Did you know that the Federal Reserve increased the money supply by 40% in just two years? That's 40% of all the money ever created in just two years. And if you are trading or investing without understanding M1, M2, M3 money supply, you are doing it blind. Let me show you exactly what money supply is, how it drives markets and how it can help you make money. But right, so let's begin here by answering the very important question, what is money supply? And in very simple terms, the money supply refers to the total amount of money available in the economy at a given time. But we do have many different kinds of measurements of the money supply, and this is very important, and don't worry, we will talk about that very soon. But the money supply includes things such as cash, coins, but also, of course, money in different kinds of bank accounts. You know, nowadays, especially here where I live in Sweden, people are barely using, you know, cash and coins anymore. Pretty much all money is digital and di digital money just becomes more and more, um, you know, important and more and more used. But here, Money supply is tracked by central banks like the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is the central bank of the US and the ECB is the European Central Bank. And the money supply helps measure how much money people and businesses can use. And this is super important because it affects everything from, you know, stock prices, cryptocurrency and so on and so on. But now, why does money supply matter? Why is it so important? Well, in super simple terms, when we have too much money, or in other words, when we are increasing the money supply too fast, this often leads to lots of inflation. As you guys might remember, during the 2020 uh, COVID pandemic, that was when the central banks in pretty much uh, you know all countries all across the world printed tons and tons of money and what happened later well when people started to spend that money the inflation exploded and we saw inflation numbers in the double digits which is absolutely crazy so when we print too much money this leads to inflation but the opposite can also be be true so when we have too little money, for example, if the money supply starts to decrease, this can lead to deflation or even a recession. And by the way, guys, if you want to learn more and dive deeper into inflation, it's super, super important to understand whether you are trading and investing. I do have a full video about that here on YouTube, and I will make sure to link it in the video card and the description. I actually also have a video here about recessions, yet another very important concept to understand, and I'll make sure to link that video as well. But of course, money supply impacts, impacts both everyday lives, uh, life, so things like groceries, rent, gas, and so on and so on, but also, super, super important, it affects asset prices. So things like stocks, cryptocurrency, gold, you know, real estate, your house, and so on and so on. Everything is impacted by money supply. And that is why, in my opinion, money supply is one of the most important metrics to follow. And I will later on in this video take a look at exactly what you can use to track money supply, uh, you know, in an effective manner. But right, so now then, now it's time to take a look at the different types of money, money supply because money supply is grouped into different categories. We call them M M0, M1, M2, M3, and so on and so on. And here, each level adds upon the previous level. So for example, uh, M M1 here is everything included in M0 plus some new types of money. In M2, it's everything included in M1 and so on and so on. So each um, each category builds upon uh, or includes the previous category. And I do have a visual in illustration for this that we will talk about soon. But here, higher numbers means broader definitions of money. And it also means less liquidity. 
Liquidity refers to how available your money is. So if you have, you know, cash in your pocket, that is very liquid because you can use it anytime. But if you instead, you know, have your wealth in, let's say, you know, stocks or something like that, it's not as available because you first need to, to sell the stock, you need to take out the money before you can spend it. And that is basically what we mean by liquidity. And if you want to learn more about liquidity, luckily I do have a video about that as well. And I'll make sure to link the video up in the video card and the description. But right, so now let's start taking a look at the different categories. And the first category here is M M0, uh, also known as the base money. And this right here refers to the most liquid, the most available money. So <clears throat> as I talked about, about before, included in M0 are, are things like cash and coins in circulation. They are very easy, easy to spend, uh, but we also include things like, uh, oops, <laughs> we also include things like bank reserves held at the central bank you know, quickly available for large banks. And this right here, M0, is the foundation of all uh, other money types. The next category here is M1. And as I said, M1 is everything included in the M0 plus what we call spendable money. So as I said, everything here in M0, but it also includes things like checking accounts and other easily spendable deposits. So still in M1, uh, all money in M1 can be very easily spent. So this is money that can be used for, you know, daily transactions. It can be used to buy, I don't know, buy groceries, uh, you know, uh, all money here can be spent very quickly. But all right, so now let's switch the attention and take a look at the M2 money supply. This right here is according to uh, me and many others, the most important money supply measurement. Um, and in M2, it's of course everything included in M1, but here we also include things like savings accounts. We also include something called small time deposits under you know 100,000 and also retail money market funds. And now you might of course wonder, you know, why is M2 the most important type? Well, the M2 is basically, many people see this as a good balance between, you know, uh, liquidity, so how available are the money, and it also has lots of economic impact. So it's basically a measurement that many people see as the most impactful money supply. But now the next type of money supply is called M3. And once again, to get M3, you take everything in M2 plus what we call large institutional money. So here we basically include money that are maybe not as easily uh, available and maybe not as liquid. So money that take longer time to move. So we include things like large time deposits over $100,000 uh, and we include institutional money market funds and also something called short-term repurchase agreements. It's not super important to understand, you know, all of these categories, exactly what they mean, but basically think about money that is a little bit slower to move. Lastly, we also have something called M4. And once again, this is M3, but here we also include other private deposits. And I do think that M4 is not measured in all countries. For example, I don't think it's actually available in the US, but it is measured in the UK. So once again, it's everything in M3, but here we also include all other, you know, private sector bank deposits. And as I said here, it's mainly used in the UK by the Bank of England. All right, so here on the screen, you have a little demonstration of how each uh, money type, money supply type, builds upon each other. So in the middle here, we have M0, and in M1, you have, uh, you know, everything in M0, including, you know, some new stuff, some uh, highly liquid uh, money. Then we have, you know, M2, it includes everything in M1 and M0 and so on and so on. Here we have M3, here we have M4. So hopefully this can help you guys see how each layer builds upon the next. 
But alright, so before we continue here, I do want to show you guys where you can find the most important charts related to money supply. And the first tool I want to use here and the first website is TradingView. So to get access, you simply go to tradingview.com. Then you go here to where it says markets, you head down to where it says economy right here, and you can go to where it says all indicators. So this is actually a very useful tool in my, my opinion. I don't see too many people use it, but as you can see, you have tons of different met metrics and charts here that you can follow and track inside TradingView. By the way, guys, if you don't, if you for some reason haven't gotten started with TradingView yet, this is my main platform that I use for both technical analysis, fundamental analysis, and also to follow important metrics in the economy. And if you haven't gotten started with TradingView yet, you are in luck because I do have a special link to TradingView. Um, you can use that link to get uh, to try out TradingView pr Premium for free for 30 days. And if you later on decide that you want to upgrade, you will get a $15 bonus. But now to find the money supply, you want to go here to where it says money. So you press right here. And as you can see right here, you have the M0, you have the M1, M2, M3, and so on and so on. Uh, it doesn't look like M4 is included, but as I said, M4 is mostly tracked in the UK. But here, uh, let's actually uh, show you guys the M2, because remember, this is one of the uh, most important, if not the most important, measurement of money supply. And here, I really think this is a super useful chart because you can see multiple countries at the same time. So for example, right here, the red line is the M2 of the United States. It is pretty much at an all-time high, which is very bullish for, you know, the stock market, crypto, and so on and so on. And you can also see here that the money supply in China has absolutely exploded recently. It is also at an all-time high. And you can see many other countries also have, you know, a pretty high supply recently. But here you can also choose pretty much whatever country you want. You have, you know, so many different countries and you can, um, you know, have multiple on the same chart. Super, super useful tool. Definitely make sure to use TradingView. Another very useful research, in my opinion, is the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. Uh, so if you just Google Fred or go to fred.com, you will get to this site right here. And here you can also track many things like inflation, uh, GDP, but also, of course, money supply. So if we search for, for example, M2 right here, uh, we should have many graphs coming up. And as you can see right here on the top, you will get the M2 chart. You also have many different, you can, for example, edit the chart and so on and so on. Uh, but this is a little bit less intuitive. I think I do, I do actually prefer TradingView because it's so easy to use. But if you want to have a sort of better direct source, uh, this can be a better alternative than TradingView. But right, okay, so now I actually do have like four more slides I want to cover. I want to dive really deep into money supply. But as I can see right here, this video is already getting long. So I do think I will save the rest of this presentation and more uh, for our YouTube channel members. If you didn't know, uh, we do have an amazing community, a growing community right here on YouTube where I share presentations like this one. I also share lots of trading stuff where we dive deep into trading. Uh, you will also get exclusive videos, even uh, some tools I have made on mindmathmoney.com and much more. So if you want to support the channel while getting much more exclusive content, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking join down below. But right, so now when you have a deeper understanding of money supply, you really need to learn more about inflation. So if you have the time, I highly, highly recommend to check out this video on inflation next.